Hey guys, this is Victoria and today I'm going to be doing a unboxing, comparison, first impression sort of video. Um, it's going to be on the Machine MK3. I'm so excited to have this in my possession. I've been waiting for this for like a month since they <laughs> announced that they would be releasing one. Um, the opening box part is going to be very brief because I want to get in there and start installing the software and actually I'm starting to have fun with this. So on that note, I'm going to go on ahead and get this started. Um, I'm sure you want to see it as much as I want to get my hands on it. So let's do this. Okay guys, I'm going to try and do this box opening <laughs> properly. I've actually never opened a box on camera before and I want to make sure I do it right because I know that it just affects the authenticity of it if I mess it up and try to pretend like <laughs> I'm opening it for the first time. So here we got the machine. Here we got the world's smallest pair of scissors. I couldn't find any other ones, so this is just going to have to work for now, but I think it'll be all right. Okay, so of course we got our little tab right here. Oh, there she goes. All right. So happy. Okay. It's always, always so fun opening new pieces of gear. Oh, and they always do such a good job at packaging. Okay. I was half expecting a piece of foam, but I totally forgot it's in there. Okay, now we can be amazed. There she is. Oh my gosh. She's so beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna try <laughs> and get this out effectively without breaking things. Okay, I'm going to put this down real quick. Oof, must be careful. Okay. So look at y'all. Comes with everything. Apparently you can save these and it's like life hack stuff right here, but I'm probably not gonna save that. And in this little guy, we've got your license. Well, my license. So got the serial number, which I'm sorry, I'm covering it up. It's only good for one thing and I don't I need the serial number. So we're gonna put that down over here. Put the, I think it has instructions. Yeah, it's just giving you the website of where to go. Um, safety instructions. Stickers, so you can put them on your laptop and car and other things. And that's it. That's all that's in there. Okay. I'm gonna say that that's probably a power supply, but just gonna make sure. Okay, nothing else in the box. I'm gonna get this off because I'm really afraid of <laughs> dropping my machine. See, I put my glasses back on. I couldn't see while I was doing the intro to this video, but my glasses, my glasses were just shining. They were all types of shiny. Okay, oh, it smells so new. I, I know, strange, but oh, look at that. Here, I'll give you I'll give you a close-up view. I don't know how close it's gonna get. Here she is. I wish they had multiple colors. I had the white machine MK2 and I like the way the white looks, but I am okay with the black machine MK3. That is alright with me. Okay, I'm gonna discard that and also discard that. I'm gonna keep these right here for now. Okay, what's in the box? Cables, adapters, I'm sure. <laughs> yep, there we go. All right, we've got a special Native Instruments USB cable. I don't know if you can see it, but it is a Native Instruments one, so super fancy, made just for the machine. And the power cable. Now from what I know, um, the power cable is not mandatory for this to function, but if you want the LEDs to be brighter, um, then you'll want to use it. <laughs> but I think it's, I want to say it's bus powered, <laughs> most of them are. 
Okay, and then a bunch of different adapters for different countries. But I will be using the, I don't know if it's like the North American adapter, but this adapter is the one that I'll be using. But you can go with whichever one suits your needs of whatever country or continent you're in. I, I honestly don't know how the adapters work, if it's countries or continents, but I'm gonna put them away now. All right, and that's gonna be, sorry, I don't wanna throw those. That's gonna be the unboxing for right now. I will start installing everything and then I'll go on ahead and start doing an actual review of what it looks like on. So I don't want to make you <laughs> wait through um, me downloading. So I'll be back. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to get everything up and running in here and then we'll start doing that part of the first impression. First thing I'm going to talk about is the physical aspects of it. Um, it's a hard plastic kind of grainy feel to it. Um, there you go so um, it's not like the kind of velvety plastic I don't know if you know what I'm talking about it's kind of like a softer but um, I do like it it feels lighter than the MK2 but it actually isn't it actually is a little bit heavier but I thought it felt a little bit lighter the buttons are very soft cushy feel to them they feel high quality and I appreciate that they went with kind of the etching out the words as opposed to printing them on, at least for the black buttons. You can see they shine that really nice soft white LED through them. They kept the eight knobs that they had in the MK2, but they added a feature where they're touch sensitive. So you just can touch the top of them and they'll react. So that's a cool new feature. They changed the, I call it the main knob, I'm sure it has its own name, but it's still endless encoder and you can still feel it notching, but they changed it to almost kind of a joystick feel. It has four directions that you can just push on either end of it. See, like going back and forth. So I've tried it, I've been trying to figure out how to utilize that. I, again, just got this, so I'm figuring it out and as it goes. I'm going to talk about the pads next. They are slightly bigger than the MK2's pads. They have the same kind of spacing between them. So if you have muscle memory from when you would play your MK2, they say that you're not supposed to really feel a difference. So that's super great. <laughs> and they are, as expected, very responsive. I'm going to do a little test. So I think it caught pretty much everything that I was playing there. Um, I may have to go in there and adjust the sensitivity on the pads. Usually it's kind of marked right in the middle. I like them super sensitive, but I'm not going to waste your time and do that on camera. But I think I think they feel really good still. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good enough for now. I'm going to talk about the different pad modes. Um, you have keyboard mode, which is like a keyboard. I'm going to pick a sound that's a little more melodic, though. All right, so that sounds awesome. Chromatic, <laughs> there's a bunch of different scales, like a lot of different scales in here that you can choose from so that you can let your creativeness flow. Now we got chords. I don't think that sound is able to do chords. Let's try this. Okay, so that's just one of the many different types of chords you can choose from. And now we have step. I don't use step sequencers too, too much, honestly, but you can see it's definitely doing what step sequencers do. I'll go on ahead and just put a little something in here just so you can see it in action. Okay, we're gonna just stop that because I'm sure you don't want to hear it throughout this whole time. It's just gonna keep playing since I'm recording simultaneously all this audio. 
Okay, and next I want to go on ahead and try and demo the um, the pitch ribbon and mod ribbon. I'm sure it can do everything, but right now it's not doing anything. Let's try different sound. I'm sure that's probably the issue. <laughs> okay, so there you go. It sounds like a ghost, but you get what it does. And if you didn't know already, this is a feature that is brand new on the Machine MK3. So we're going to come up here to Arranger just to show you that it reflects what's going on in the um, machine software itself. Right now there's nothing or else you would be hearing this loop just go over and over and over, which is great for making music. But for right now, for this tutorial, you don't want to hear that. Trust me, look at obnoxious. So even though they have a different layout framing at the pads as well as this kind of main control area, essentially it has the same functions as the MK2, but it is laid out much, much nicer. So we're going to move over to doing a side-by-side -side comparison of the MK2 and the MK3. Here they are next to each other, the Machine MK2 and the MK3. I'm sure you can tell which one's which. I tried to use both of them to control machine and I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I didn't feel like messing with it right now. But this one is in just MIDI controller mode. This one's controlling the software itself. Um, I've seen people use two at the same time. I've never had two going at the same time, but I'm sure there's a way. If you want to come and tell us how, go on ahead and do it. <laughs> I am going to bring out a measuring tape just to compare the two um, in more the size of the pads just because as we were talking about earlier they were claiming that you know bigger pads with the same kind of spacing so here we have the size of the actual pad on the MK2 which is right at I think four three trying to focus on here three centimeters and if we measure the size of the pads on the MK3 we're looking at a slightly bigger size of about 3.4 centimeters and I'm pretty sure I'm reading the 3.4 part. I actually never used the metric system, but I feel like it was a little more precise for this. So that's why we're using it right now. I'm now going to measure the actual width of all the pads together to see if they're different because they're not supposed to be. Now I'm looking here and we're right at 14 centimeters. And when I go over here, I know you can't see the end of it. I'm sorry. But trust me when I say that it is also 14 centimeters. There might be like a millimeter difference. Like barely the MK2 might be a little bigger than the MK3 by a millimeter. So not significant at all. We're going to talk about the way that the pads actually feel. So the MK3 has kind of soft, squishy, grippy feels to them where they manage to somehow on the MK2 make them soft and firm at the same time. It's awesome. Now they say that the accuracy of the MK2 pads is more spot on, more responsive, but um, I still need to test that fully. I really don't doubt it though. Now the words up here um, indicate shift functions, which are still labeled on there, just they're on the pads themselves. So I hope they last. Now we have our eight um, buttons up here, same as they were before, eight knobs down here, same as they were before, just different knobs on the new one. Up here in the kind of master control section, um, you have pretty much the same things going on, um, except without the shift functions, which are labeled up on top of the buttons. They seem to have given the MK3 more dedicated buttons, which is amazing. There's 12 there versus the eight on the MK2. Overall, I'm so impressed with the way that they have laid out the MK3. They utilized the surface area so well, um, less 
shifting, more buttons, same amount of space. We got the knobs here, master knobs. They are both endless encoders, um, have that notching feeling to them, pretty much the same. And the note repeats are different, bigger on the MK3, which is amazing. And there's a lock function. I haven't dug into what it does yet, but I'll figure it out. And um, the volume, the tempo, controls the swing that's all still there and these two are no longer existent on here because the knob can go up and down and side to side so don't really need those two little side to side buttons we got the ribbon which i demonstrated earlier which is not on the mk2 at all there's just metal right there you got your groups that haven't changed too much you still got your eight buttons here your eight buttons there and then you have your transport section they got the play you got record got a stop button which is awesome you still got your erase button just um it switch positions and they also combined just erase and replace into one button You've got your tap and metronome activate button there and your shift button still there, still very important even though we have more buttons. Now the buttons along the side here um, and up here, they are pretty much shift functions and already existing buttons just distributed differently. So as you can tell, most of the functionality is all there as if it was in the MK2, just it's laid out differently. So we're gonna go on ahead and turn them around and look at the butts. And for the final portion of this review video, we are looking at the rear ends of the machines, the MK3 and the MK2. So you can see um, one's a little bit bigger than the other in height, but well, that's not important. But we're gonna look at the MK2 first so let me get moved over here get situated all right so here we go really basic back here pretty much all you got is the usb and the midi five pin in and out so that's pretty much it but you don't need to too much with that but here we got the mk3 now there's so much on here because it's an audio interface not just a controller so of course you still have to have a computer to make everything work but we can use it to record and play back audio you got your line out right here left and right to your monitors your speakers and has a volume knob really nice solid volume knob doesn't feel like it's gonna break on you and you have your headphone out. I know I'm going out of order, but headphone out quarter inch um, volume for that. So it's a good thing that they're independent of each other, two separate knobs. We're gonna move on over to the mic input now. It's a quarter inch input, so probably optimized for more dynamic microphones. Um, I can't imagine it's gonna offer any phantom power through a quarter inch out. So if you're using it for a live situation, perfect with the dynamic. Um, but if you're wanting to use a condenser mic, you may wanna use a different interface. You got the gain right here. And this gain has a bit more resistance than the other knobs do. So that feels like you have a bit more control with the resistance. Um, I give that a thumbs up. I think that's a plus on here. And if you use a keyboard or something similar with lines out, you have line in inputs right here. So you got one and two, stereo, and that's good for pretty much any line out application you may have in your head. Got MIDI in and out, five pin, and a pedal input, your USB, and the power cable input. And you can turn this thing on and off, which is really cool. A lot of controllers, you, you can't really turn them on or off. You just unplug them, which can get a little bit annoying. So I love having an on and off button. Sometimes you just want to turn it off without unplugging it have for you today for my first impressions video of the machine mk3 so far so good um i <laughs> really am in love with my machine already um i'm glad that i didn't just spend six hundred dollars <laughs> to not have that big of a difference in product um it has significant upgrades and it's overall um better product so i'm very very happy with my purchase
so far. <laughs> and a couple things that I'd like for you to take away from this, um, just little hiccups that I ran into along the way that prolonged this process. Um, as you can see, it was a little longer <laughs> than a day to get this video completed. And um, first off, if you are using any operating system below 10.11 um, for your Mac, you're gonna have to upgrade or update, I guess, to 10.11 and up. The only hard part about that is if you don't have it, it's gonna try and make you upgrade to the very most recent update. And if there's anything you take away from this video, it is that you should avoid updating your operating system until you really have to. I say that because um, whenever there's a brand new update, um, I have, I have a theory that Apple just doesn't tell um, all the software companies about it and so all the software just doesn't work the way it used to. So if you have it to where your system is operating, I mean updating automatically, I would turn that off. I have it turned off but for whatever reason my Mac Mini updated to like the very most recent one and it just, it makes me a little a little sad because things aren't running the way that they used to and I know not to do it just automatically did it for some reason um on this computer I'm on 10.10 .10 and I wasn't able to download and use the machine on it um, I'm still not intending on updating that one unless I absolutely have to but I have it on my Mac mini so that's my main computer that I use for making music so anyways I'm getting off a of track over here so um, if that is anything to take away take that and um, next thing that I wrote down is going to be to make sure that you update your machine software to the newest version um, which would be 10.6.9 sorry 2.6.9 I apologize I'm still stuck in <laughs> OS world so um, if you are working on 2.6.8 which was the update right before this um, the machine mk3 is not gonna work um, I tried it <laughs> and it just wasn't working and I looked in there and it does just have, you know, updates to make it work together with the new hardware. Um, so you can do that from Native Instruments website. Um, once you register your machine, it's going to give you instructions on how to you know, <laughs> get the newest update. You can do it from Native Access too. I think that's the name of the software that they have you install on your computer. So I'm um, going ahead and do that. If your machine's not working, when you plug it in, that's probably why. There's also going to be a firmware update um, when you plug in your machine. It's going to just prompt you immediately about it. So let's go on ahead and do that if you want your machine to work properly. And um, last thing, I mean, if you haven't um, downloaded the kind of preview application, um, it's a big download <laughs> and um, it just lets you preview different presets um, within Native Instruments plugins. Um, if you want to, you know, scan through things and hear how they sound before you go to all the trouble of loading it, <laughs> then um, that can be useful for you. And I think that is about all that I have for you. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I am doing more and more review videos. I'm going to be doing another one um, shortly. I was on jury duty for the past two weeks and had not enough time to work on these but um it's over now and i'm gonna be back on track so thank you so much for watching and see you next